Okay, so um, in the last, uh, so I was already starting to write a DBQ, but then I faced some technical difficulties, so I'm just going to pretend like it didn't happen. Um, but I'm going to go through the same process, and maybe now that I've already looked at the documents, I can teach it faster. Um, so obviously the objective of this is not necessarily to me write a DBQ really fast, but I'm going to try to write it within 30 minutes, um, just because I wasted tons of time on the last one, and it's really frustrating uh, to me. Um, all of that information is not necessarily lost, but it's just disjointed. Um, and so that's frustrating because I don't know how to like merge videos and teams. Um, but oh well. So you can check out the other video. You can see me um, analyze the document. So I have a printed out version of this. I'm not actually going to use it. I'm just going to use the desktop version that I have on my computer. Um, I'm going to walk you through my thinking process, my approach to writing a document-based question that is most beneficial to you, and hopefully that helps. Um, so first of all, I have some stuff written down, um, just some stuff that I'm going to tell you, and then I actually have notes from the DBQ that I was writing this morning. I hadn't made notes before, uh, but now I have the notes um, just because I was writing the DBQ earlier this morning before I was thrown off the call. Um, so, um, the, but uh, I promise you I didn't cheat. Um, but the first thing that you need to do is decide on computer or paper. You can take this AP test by typing it on the computer. Some of you type really slow and type like this. There's no way in heck that I encourage you to type it if you type like this. You're not going to type fast enough. You need to write it. Um, unless you type like this and, and sufficiently fast, then I. I can trust you to, to, to type it um, in 45 minutes. Um, there are benefits to both, I think. Well, I benefits to writing on paper. I think a lot of people don't want to write it on paper, but there are benefits. Uh, I don't think you second guess yourself as much. If you're writing it on paper, you kind of just write it and you have an ability to scratch it out easily. Um, while when you're typing it, you might get a little nervous, use the delete key, use the delete key, worry about specific ideas. Um, when you're just writing it, you know, you, you can like cross it out, et cetera. Um, so I think you, you hear that. Um, I think you also need to time yourself. What do you think you realistically can do? Um, you know, maybe next week try writing um, part of a DBQ within 10 minutes or, or try to write the whole DBQ. This is going to be a DBQ, I think, most of the upcoming weeks uh, in 45 minutes or typing one. Um, also, I would recommend having scratch paper handy. If you're writing it on the computer, I think you could use the same document uh, that you're writing your essays, kind of scratch paper ideas and stuff like that. But I like having scratch paper handy uh, nonetheless. I did that in college too when I was writing an, uh, a paper um, or a final paper or a midterm paper, I would have scratch, well, not just scratch paper, right? You don't just write it in one whole process. Uh, B, you better not have kicked me out of the other one. Um, so you might not, I'm just going to re go through the process that B. Hopefully this helps you out too, because this is basically the answers to the DPQ on tomorrow and Friday. Um, and then, so you can go through that process, um, you know, of, of, where did I leave off? Um, so have scratch paper, and I mean, going through a research paper in college is more like it's a whole kind of approach. Like you have different books, you have different articles that you're reading, and so you're taking notes everywhere. You're taking notes in your computer. You're taking notes on those handouts. You're going to find out what's best for you. But I liked having scratch paper sometimes uh, to kind of outline my ideas and thoughts. Um, so I'm going to have it here. Um, first of all, I want you to read documents and make notes as you along. Um, that's the most, um, I mean, that's the most logical approach. Uh, there's no point in reading documents. I'm going to make notes. And now I'm going to turn to the DBQ and hopefully I can write it in 30 minutes. You guys will take much longer. Let's see. All right, so this is what I started writing before I was kicked out um, I'll in the process that I got here or how I um, got here in a B, can you see my, can you see this PDF or is it a blank page? It's a uh, document. 
It's all the doc. Okay, cool. Um, so this is DBQ on European exploration. This is the prompt. Analyze the extent to which Europeans' exploration of the new world was driven by economic factors. So the most simple thing, but, but also um, the most uh, often overlooked thing is you have to break down the prompt. Um, the word analyze the extent. With that word extent, it wants you to give some sense of degree. Uh, what's the degree to which European exploration of the new world was driven by economic factors? Was it a lot? Was it a little? Was it significant? Was it profound? Um, that's what that word means. Um, economic factors just means money, um, gold, resources, um, bank. That's what economic factors are about. So I know my essay has to center around this premise in some sense, right? My uh, thesis has to center um, and respond to this prompt um, as clearly as possible. Um, then um, after I had that in mind, maybe I'm making a couple of notes and I did make a couple of notes in my um, page here. Um, I am go ahead. I'm going to start reading the documents and I'm reading the documents. I'm making notes um, about the main ideas of the documents. They don't have to be complete sentences. I don't want you to do complete sentences yet, um, but you should be able to turn them into complete sentences easily when you cite and source documents. So you have to cite and source two of the documents. I'm sorry, you have to source two documents at least. I recommend sourcing three just in case one of your sourcing is a little dodgy. Um, so in document one, it's uh, written by Ferdinand II, a Spanish monarch. The requirement to 1513, a statement written to be to Native Americans after being discovered. So since document one is written by Ferdinand II, uh, I'm already questioning the speaker, right? Ferdinand II is a Spanish king um maybe has a spanish perspective um if you're we're talking about european colonialism a european is going to have a completely different point of view this time period than someone um in uh, americas so maybe i want to question his perspective about what took place in the americas but it's a statement written aloud to native americans so maybe i want to when i'm making this sourcing because i i I can already tell you after I read it that I wanted to source this one um, that maybe talk about who the audience is, which is Native Americans. And so he tells Native Americans, I implore you, meaning I beg you to recognize the church as a lady and in the name of the Pope, take the king as Lord of this land and obey his mandates. If you do not do it, I tell you with the help of God, I will her powerfully against you all. I will make war everywhere in every way that I can. I will subject you to the yoke and obedience of to the church and to his majesty. I will take your women and children and make them slaves. The deaths and injuries that you will receive from here on your own fault and not of his majesty nor of gentlemen that accompany me. Um, so you can see, you know, the notes that I wrote here were when I read it for the first time were it seems pretty threatening to the natives, um, obviously. And I want to source this document because I want to question the credibility and reliability of Ferdinand II, um, because maybe he comes into question. Uh, maybe he's not the most reliable source. Um, he also has a lot of authority in Spain. Um, you know, obviously he is trying to link um, European exploration of the New World to um, religion. He's telling Native Americans, please adopt. Um, you know, Christianity, please adopt Catholicism, or he's going to attack. Um, and so I think I maybe can, I think this source is very interesting. It suggests at face value, if I just take what Ferdinand II is saying, and one of the primary motives of European exploration was in fact religion. Um, now knowing in retrospect that it is not, or, or now knowing that my prompt talks about economic motives, Maybe I want to put this document into question if my thesis is like, yeah, to a significant extent, it was about economic motives. If my thesis was, well, there were economic motives, but then there were religious and other motives as well, then maybe I want to boost um, this document and make it a more central feature of my argument. Document two is by a German painter, again, a European perspective. And he's writing after viewing Aztec treasures brought back to Europe by Hernan Cortez. Hernan Cortez course, being the conquistador that conquers the Aztec Empire. And then it says, I saw the things which had been brought to the king from the new land of gold, a son of all of gold, a whole fathom broad, and a moon all of silver of the same size. 
also two rooms of the amount of the people there with all manner of wondrous weapons, clothing, beds, and all manner of wondrous objects of human use. I saw amongst them wonderful works of art, and I marveled at the subtle ingenia of men in foreign lands. Um, so document two um, is kind of, um, you could source it, I not, you know, there's nothing really there, um, except a main idea, right? So he says Europeans brought back gold and silver. It's pretty obvious. They brought back tons of gold and silver from Hernan Cortez's uh, conquest in the Americas. And because I know a lot about the conquest in the Americas, I'm actually going to integrate outside evidence uh, when I integrate this document into my uh, essay. And then document three is by um, a Catholic missionary, Father Bernardino de Sagun. I don't know how to pronounce that missionary from his book, General History of Things of New Spain. Um, and he says, the Spaniards appear to be much delighted. They seized upon the gold like monkeys, their faces flush, for clearly the thirst for gold was insatiable. Insatiable means not satisfied, not, not being able to be satisfied. They starved for it, they lusted for it, they wanted to stuff themselves with it as if they were pigs. They went about feeling the streamers of gold, passing them back and forth, babbling, talking gibberish amongst themselves. Um, so that one, I'm not going to, um, maybe I want to boost the credibility of this document, because I'm going to tell you up front that um, my thesis is actually going to be centered around, I'm thinking uh, that economic factors had a, a significant, um, um, uh, were, were significantly important to European exploration in the new world. Um, so maybe I want to boost the credibility of this document and maybe say, yeah, it's from a European perspective. So again, focus on the speaker and soap. It's from a European perspective, um, but that perspective is, um, you know, really, really, um, you, you know, makes it even more uh, reliable that from a European perspective, he said this. He said that um, the mission or that um, Spaniards were were stealing gold like monkeys, and he was so critical of Spain from a European perspective. Um, so maybe I want to talk about the speaker or the purpose. Um, I'm just going to focus on the speaker in the essay and talk about how, from the fact it's from a European point of view, it's from a European perspective, and he still has this to say about Spain. Um, that's really, really, you know, um, boosts the credibility of the assertion that he's making, which is that Europeans um, went to the New World essentially just for gold and silver. Um, and then the next one is um, from a, a Spanish explorer who wrote the history of Peru based largely on interviews with conquistadors, again, from a European perspective. Um, so Pizarro stranded us on a small Pacific um, island off South America, uh, was downcast when he saw they all wanted to go. He quietly composed himself and said that, of course, they could return to Panama and the choice was theirs. He had not wanted them to leave because they would have their reward if and when they discovered a good land. As for himself, he felt that returning poor to Panama was a harder thing than staying to face death and hardship here. Pizarro replied that they had come from Spain. They had left their lands to explore these parts, but primarily and above all, to let them know that the idols they worshipped were false and to save their souls, they had to, to become Christians. And so here you can see a um, Christian or the religious motive again uh, being suggested by the document. I'm not necessarily going to source this document. Maybe I can question the um, motives of Pizarro himself um, and say that the purpose of uh, Pizarro might have been called into question. Maybe he was just trying to convince people from leaving um, and stop people from leaving. So he brought out the whole like, oh, God wouldn't want you to leave um, story, um, which I think we've all heard before. Right. You know, people trying to control us using uh, religion as a means to controlling us. So maybe I do want to source that document. I actually have it written down here that I did. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll do that. And then document five is from also from a conquistador. All of these documents are from European perspective. So I mean, that raises questions about the quality of writing of these prompts by this, um, this workbook. But um, nonetheless, I think European perspectives are probably more accessible. Um, so that's probably why. And also from the Spanish perspective as well, there's no like English exploration, there's no uh, French exploration um, in this document. So maybe I want to talk about that. I'm probably not. I'm just going to stick to Spanish exploration because I only have 45 minutes. 
And then, so this is from a conquistador to King Philip of Spain. In my youth, I crossed the sea to the land of Peru to gain fame. That's like it in a nutshell. Um, basically, it continues because we're running out of time. Uh, okay. He kind of tells off the King of Spain, look here, King of Spain, do not be cruel and ungrateful to your vassals because while your father and you stayed in Spain without the slightest bother, your vassals at the price of their blood and fortune have given you all the kingdoms and holding you you have in these parts. All right, so I started writing um, contextualization paragraphs in the other one. You'll notice that I was kind of flustered when I was writing it because um, there's just so many different um, things that I wanted to convey to you. Um, and I think I, it's better for me to just explain my thinking and explain why I chose um, two contextualization paragraphs. So these are two contextualization paragraphs um, that I wrote that I think you could use. You, you can use a lot more. Contextualism is all about uh, putting the, the documents into its greater context. What is happening in this period? What is happening before this period um, that puts um, both the documents into context and your essay into context? Um, but I would say that after you documents, after you have notes of the documents and everything, then you want to come up with your argument in your head at least, right? Maybe you start writing your argument down. Uh, maybe you write keynotes and what you think your argument's going to be about, um, about um, the extent to which European exploration was driven by economic factors. Maybe you have an idea, um, but you should already have a sense of where you're going when you're writing the contextualization paragraph. And so when I'm writing contextualization paragraph, the first one I came up with was in 1492, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella sponsored Christopher Columbus's voyage to find an alternative route to Asia for trading purposes. Christopher Colum Columbus stumbled dead into the New World. This kickstarted European exploration of the New World, which were driven, which was driven, sorry, was driven by the motives of God, gold, and glory. Um, then you can also write, then you can go next, and I'll, I'll, I'll attach a thesis to this. Another contextualization paragraph I thought about was this one that focused on the ideology of mercantilism. I think everybody knows how fascinated I am by ideas and having ideas having an influence on world history. I think this also stems from like my academic interests as well. Um, so it's a long story, but yeah, I think ideas can have a profound effect on world history. And so um, in the age of exploration, the economic ideology, remember an action-oriented belief system, a mercantilism dominated. Mercantilism was an economic ideology that emphasized exporting more than importing and the acquisition of gold and silver. Um, this was the context in which Europeans were exploring the new world and explains why Spaniards and later Englishmen uh, were obsessed with finding gold and silver to exploit in the new world. Um, so that's a good contextualization paragraph. I would also just say that this Contextualiza that contextualization paragraphs, good ones, can also just be integrated into the essay. You need another piece of outside ev evidence in your essay um, that, uh, or two pieces of outside evidence in your essay that can't be found in the documents. So if you come up with a good contextualization paragraph and you think, oh gosh, the, another one could have been really good, maybe just include it when you're talking about the documents in the body paragraph. Um, because maybe it'll add more context to the documents. I saw a document about the acquisition of gold and Spaniards fixation with gold and silver. Maybe I want to put this um, contextualization paragraph, which is really just outside evidence um, underneath uh, a source analysis or my citing of those documents and to kind of bring it out. And this would go towards getting the evidence, the outside evidence points, because you have to, you need two pieces of outside evidence. So this would be sufficient. So I'm going to stick with this one. Um, and then now I'm going to write my thesis. And remember, a thesis has to have a claim and a why. Uh, so this kicks out European exploration of the new world, which was driven by the motives of God, gold, and glory. This already kind of gets at a thesis, right? Because I'm saying that, um, you know, God, gold, and glory is uh, symbolic, right? Um, we've all heard it, but God means um, conversion to Christianity. Gold meaning uh, literally gold because of mercantile thinking, but also economic resources, etc. And glory meaning fame. Uh, conquistadors came to the new world. Um, but now I'm going to continue with my thesis. Remember, your thesis has to respond to the prompt, have a claim, 
and a because and a why. Economic motives were, let's see, let me look at what, what the prompt was. Oh, sorry. European exploration of the new world, however, was driven significantly by economic motives. And maybe I want to explain about this. Explain a little bit about why I think this is so. Other motives were important. Other motives such as the you convert natives to Christianity and the search for fame. So this is where I kind of reword um, God and glory or in Important, but they were often rationalizations of true or often. or obscure, rationalize means make sense of, or obscure to kind of hide. I, I'll put the obscure, I think that's better. Obscure European economic interests. All right, so I think this is a good thesis. This would be the thesis. This kind of also would relate to the thesis, but not that for now. Um, also here, I, I'll have to come up with some sort of organization kind of like how I write is I kind of wing it, so to speak, sometimes. Um, honestly, I haven't written DBQ um, since becoming a teacher, right? Um, so DBQs are more easier for me to organize um, because, you know, I used to write very much longer research papers that were much harder to organize, but I need to remember that I'm teaching. And um, um, maybe I do want to come with some form of organization before I I go into this. Um, so document one was threatening to natives. Um, Ferdinand II, is he a reliable speaker? Document two says you have gold and silver. Uh, document three criticizes European actions. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start off with like other motives first. Um, I'm gonna start off with document one. I'm gonna start, I think I'm going to start off with like other motives first, such as religion and fame. And then I'm going to go into economic motives because my argument is about economic motives being the most important. So maybe that's how I want to organize it. I don't have to organize it like that. I can organize it the other way, but that's what I want to do. Um, so then I'm going to write out um, my topic sentence. Um, here, when I'm writing out my topic sentence, you come back to your thesis because you want to speak to your thesis, right? Um, this is what my topic sentence is going to be now. The to convert natives to Christianity. Christianity and the search for fame in world spurred European exploration. The desire to convert natives to Christianity and search for new world spurred European exploration, but they were secondary motives. Um, and then in this, 
um, document one is King Ferdinand. So maybe I'll say in document one. So remember, I took careful notes. So maybe I don't even have to reference the documents. In document one, King Ferdinand. This is me summarizing the document in my own words. Threatens the natives to convert to Christianity. Um, quick question. Is like the contextualization, was that your contextualization, the first part the in the anti portion? Okay, so I didn't even know you were on media. Is that media? Um, yeah, I just left. I was listening to a podcast. What's up? No, is it the first part? Is that contextualization? The yeah. in 1942? Okay. So this is what I did. I did contextualization here, um, but I also like this contextualization too. But if you have, this one is also contextualization, but what I said in the rational, I don't know how long have you been here, but the rationalization I gave was, if you come up with a good contextualization paragraph, you can also just bring it down, right? Because that could be like an outside evidence point. Um, so contextualization is basically outside evidence um, that puts it into the broader context. But like you can also talk about mercantilism. I know you being you, you would want to be like very descriptive in your contextualization and you might put both or like even more. And that's why your contextualization paragraphs were so long. But then I would just like bring it down, right? Because it doesn't count towards the outside evidence point if you have it as contextualization. They would just count it as one whole contextualization point. Does well, that make sense? Short. Yeah. well, now they're I short. Mean, well, yeah, but this one's short. I already turned in. Oh, and remind me, this is besides the point. Uh, but where where is it? Fake, you haven't even read it. Yeah, Fake. I haven't read it yet because I, I wanted to write it first. Is the other one messed up on me? It like canceled on me. It, it kicked me out and I was working so hard. Or actually, I'm not working very hard. The writing's very bad. It has passive voice, but don't judge. Um, so the desire to convert natives to Christianity and search for fame in the world, new or the in the uh, new world, spurred European explanation, but there were secondary motives and Dr. One King Ferdinand threatens natives, natives to convert to Christianity. Um, document Ferdinand. The second, a Spanish monarch uh, I'm gonna just tell you that I'm gonna be in and out of this, so I'm gonna probably okay, that's fine. Out. I'm, not, I'm not really focused okay. on okay. Oh, yeah. However, is Spanish the desire to convert natives to Christianity and search for fame in the new world spurred European exploration, but they were secondary motives. Written in the second is Spanish monarch. So Ferdinand II, a Spanish monarch, is perhaps trying to justify trying to obscure the economic motives of Um, that's kind of a bold claim, but I can also make it tie it back to my contextualization. Ferdinand and Isabella, after all, had sponsored Christopher Columbus's voyage primarily for economic reasons. Maybe I can tie it in that. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, then you can also put, let's see, 
in document for Pizarro, because what takes place in Pizarro Look at the document here. Is trying to encourage his fellow conquistadors to stay on the off south America. Or maybe not to retreat to Panama. In document four, Pizarro was trying to encourage fellow conquistadors not to retreat to Panama. Um, he says, that European exploration, the new world is about the conversion of natives to Christianity. He says that European exploration in the new world is about the conversion of natives to Christianity. However, Pizarro's purpose was in citing Christianity was likely to citing of Christianity was likely an attempt to convince fellow conquistadores to stay so this kind of gets at the fact that there was an absence so this in this citing i'm talking more about the purpose of this document right I would have another document that supports it. Um, finally, document five and document five. Lope de Arquide, a European says pretty explicitly, or not pretty explicitly, says explicitly that European exploration of the new world was decision to come to the new world was driven by a search for things. So in document five, Lope de Agria says explicitly that his decision to come to the new world was driven by a search for fame. Lope de Aguirre, however, also lambasts or criticizes the King of Spain enjoys riches and kingdoms thanks to European Conquistadores uh, 
he is ungrateful for. Then I might want to tie all these documents together and say, in all these documents, Christianity, or maybe I want to concede, right? Because making your argument more complex makes uh, maybe make a concession. Granted, Christ the desire to convert natives to Christianity and the search Granted, the desire to convert natives to Christianity and the search for um, granted the desire to convert natives to Christianity. Guys, don't mess with my mic or anything like that right now because this is taking me a while to do and it's a lot of hard work. Um, but yeah, you can still watch or whatever. Granted, the desire to convert natives to Christianity and the search for fame are still important motivations for European or were still important motivations for Europeans, but they are also plainly secondary to economic motives or potentially crafted to obscure I'm going to take away potentially I'm going to be bold or crafted to obscure economic motives and then finally I'm going to put the next part of my thesis so I took that topic sentence um, basically this was I reconverted that into a topic sentence for this body paragraph and then I'm going to take this one European exploration of the new world was driven significantly by economic motives, right? And then here, I'm going to take document two says pretty ex or says explicitly that Europeans brought back gold and silver from their conquest. Or in document two, seems impressed by Spanish conquistadors um, bringing back gold and silver from their conquests of the Aztec Empire. This is where I'm going to integrate outside evidence because outside evidence is super important to integrate that into your essay. So I'm going to say um, Hernan Cortez conquered the Aztec Empire and developed a strategy mimicked by Spaniards and um, other Europeans afterwards for exploiting economic resources. This strategy was 
hinged on capturing the leader of natives in Cortez's case, Moctezuma, and holding him for ransom. Spaniards also used and implemented the encomienda system which was partially predicated on existing Aztec institutions of tribute to exploit riches. Maybe something like that. This is kind of a little bit complicated, um, but that would be a point of outside evidence. You could also talk about um, something else. This doesn't have to be it. Um, but that's just one point of outside evidence. I'm going to keep writing the DBQ. Um, let's see. Document three criticizes European actions in the new world. Um, so in document three, I'm going to source this document. So in document three, a Spanish missionary criticizes Spaniards' eagerness to plunder and steal gold and riches from the people they conquered. He likens Spaniards to pigs. I'm going to source this document because I think it's significant that this document is coming from the perspective of a Spaniard. So I'm going to focus on the S in SOAP and source this document and say the fact a Spaniard with close who journeyed to the new world was critical of the motives of fellow Spaniards a Spanish missionary nonetheless a Spanish missionary who journeyed was critical of the motives suggests that economic motives were central to European exploration. Right, it does that because, and then maybe I want to spell out my logic a little bit better. Um, if a Spanish, you know, you know, because he's a Spaniard, so maybe I should spell out my logic a little bit better, but I'm, I'm running low on time. Um, then the only other document I haven't used, I think, is document three, document four, purpose of these auto. I think I used them all. Um, I haven't used them all. Document one, two, three, I haven't used four. But I don't have to use them all. I can just use four, and I'm tired, so I'm not going to use them all. Um, but I can also say I can bring in outside evidence, too. Like, you know how I promised to bring out, uh, what did I promise to bring out? Promise to bring out this. No, I thought I used them all. Then I, oh, yeah, I used all the documents. Maybe I can bring this out. In the age of exploration, the economic ideology of mercantilism dominated a mercantilism ideology that emphasized exporting more than importing the acquisition of gold and silver. Uh, so maybe I can put this. 
actually I could put it in the same place right after here. This would also be a good um, evidence point, uh, outside evidence point. You don't have to use both, um, but that would also be a good outside evidence point. Um, maybe after this, you would want to go back and try to integrate more information, make sure that you're using documents properly. Um, you also want to integrate two outside evidence points. So let's look for another one that I can integrate an outside evidence point for. Maybe I can put an outside evidence point here in the 16th century. The Zadral conquered the um, Incan Empire and maybe this further contextualizes what's going on. It's outside evidence that further calls BS on his claims. Pizarro conquered the Incan Empire and plundered the Incans of gold and silver. The Spanish since then established or exploited the Incan Mita system to turn it into an extractive institution. Extractive means to like extract um, resources from, right? You're extracting the resources from the native and that helped Europeans acquire forced Europeans. Let's see. I'm sorry. The Mita system. that the Spaniards used was, let's see, maybe you wouldn't have to write all this, was central in the extraction of silver at Potosi, for instance. Maybe you can be more dramatic, which was de facto slavery. Right, so this would be outside evidence as well. This you wouldn't necessarily have to put in your whole essay, but this would be outside evidence. So you can see two pieces of outside evidence. Remember that this I broke into two. You wouldn't have to necessarily be that lengthy. It could be either that one or that one. That's your contextualization paragraph. That's my thesis. I'm sorry for the bad writing. I would have broken it into paragraphs, but I was just worried the video was going to shut off. All right, I'm done. OK, wow. 45 minutes is a lot of time, no? No, it's not. I don't know how you well, did that. Well, I was talking for a good portion of it. But also, yeah, I mean, I think I'm a little bit more trained than you guys. I'm just spitballing but I don't think it's fair. But um, yeah, 45 minutes is a lot of time. Any questions on whoever the heck was watching? No. The writing's bad though, not gonna lie. The writing is bad. I did not account for that, but yeah, it is. I think if I would have written it down, I would have probably written it better. Um, yeah. Did you finish your media? What do you mean? Your essay. I literally sent it to you like 3 a.m.